Hold on, let me get the fist. See the fist? Yeah, that's Arthur B. The sun's literally about to set, so I gotta film this now. Okay, so you clicked on this video probably because one, you're stressed, or two, you're stressed and you haven't submitted your app for Nisley Y yet. Then they're done that. Well, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. If you don't know me, my name is Kelly, and I studied abroad with Nisli Y this summer in Seoul, South Korea, and I have a whole video about that process and the start of my entire vlogging series. Please go check that out if you haven't already. This is just some last minute tips I have for you in solidifying your application and hopefully seeing if Nisli is right for you. I have my iPad, my Apple Pencil, and my notes for today's video because apparently everyone who has an iPad has their life together. You know why I feel like I'm stuck in life? It's because I ain't got an iPad. So we're gonna try that. Here I have my script and I'm just gonna go through the application and just go over the parts that I think are the most relevant to needing tips for. If you do not have all your paperwork together at this point, you are really pushing it. Communicate all this information to your parents, to adults in your life that need to submit all this passport information or transcript information to Nisli Y staff. Don't make the mistake of assuming that everything is already there. It takes a while for forms to process and you don't want that delay to be the reason why you can't submit your app on time. Second thing is making sure your recommenders know when the deadline is. So you always wanna give a two weeks courtesy notice for asking for a recommendation and then being sure that you are following up, seeing where they're going or if they're going to continue to submit that letter because sometimes their mind can change. Like if they all of a sudden don't have a capacity, you wanna be able to have a backup person to ask and obviously give that two weeks courtesy notice. Try to you know stay on top of making sure the letter submit so that your application is first eligible before it is accepted. So the second tip I have is for the activities and hobbies section. You want to format your activities and all that stuff into the resume format. So what I mean by that is using action verbs, quantifying the impact of your said activity, and showing quality over quantity. Through quantifying your impact, using strong action verbs like started or founded or communicated, really digging into the impact of your activity shows a lot more character than just saying, I participated in club meetings. So you want to be able to do that with all of your activities and hobbies. Don't try to like laundry list all the things that you've possibly done in the span of your birth up until high school. Try to focus on a few key things that you really think are relevant to who you are and what will be relevant to Nisli. Second section is recommender. So likely you're going to ask a teacher or a mentor of some sort to write you a letter. Something I would recommend is sending them a brag sheet or a resume that kind of details all the activities you did in high school to also give them something to write about. But also sit down with them, maybe in person if that's possible, but not over Zoom or some other kind of online space and really talk to them about why you're applying. So you want to be able to communicate why you're applying to them and also why you're applying your essays. It would be even better if they can bring up personal anecdotes about you talking about your passion for learning languages or for studying abroad, etc. Because those anecdotes are really what separate their letters from a generic recommendation letter. So if you're really close to this teacher or mentor and you've clearly indicated many instances where you were passionate about Nisli or other study abroad adventures, then that is a good person to ask and you definitely want to check up on them and see if they need any more information on your end. Okay, I had to turn the light on because it was getting too dark. But anyways, so the third part is the self-introduction to your host family. Now, big, big, huge disclaimer, your host family might actually read your essay. I know, shocking, who could imagine? But hear me out, my host dad, actually talked to me about what I wrote in my host essay letter and he said wow you have a podcast can I listen to it and he actually listened to the podcast like with me and my roommate and it was so freaking cool but also like I didn't expect him to read it because I wrote that essay to apply for Nisley of course when you're writing this essay just keep in mind it is a possibility that they will read it not all students have this experience but it's possible so yeah don't be cringe with your essay 
So for this letter, Nisli actually has a list of questions that you should be able to answer by the end of your essay. But obviously, don't just copy the questions word for word and then add in your answers. You want to be creative with how you answer these questions and they don't actually have to be in order either. You just have to be able to convey yourself and convey your role within family or your academic and career goals throughout the end of the letter. I personally formatted into an actual letter, so I said like, Dear Host Parents and I signed it with my name but the body section of it, like most essays, should be a story. When it comes to creative writing, you want to think a lot about showing and not telling. Instead of saying, I am passionate about languages, you kind of give reasons or qualifications to say, I am passionate about languages because I was involved in a Korean language club at school, or because I did Chinese martial arts, I picked up on Chinese characters and took a Chinese class, which is why I'm apply for Nisli Wai Chinese. You are able to show a more personal side and creative side to answering those questions without explicitly stating these are my academic and career goals. I will say for this host family letter, you really want to emphasize on the role that you will play in the host family. So a lot of people say I'm the mom friend of the group, but obviously you want to be more specific than that. How are you the mom friend? In what instances were you the mom friend and were you not the mom friend? So just think about that in the context of the word count because this is the longest essay you will have to write in the Nisli app. Okay, second part is the shorter essays. They're, I call them supplemental essay questions because that's pretty much what they will be called when you apply to colleges. If you're a senior applying to colleges right now, I feel you been there done that you'll get through it so since i only did summer i didn't have to do the second essay but if you're applying for academic year obviously you would do that so the first essay that i think you do every year for nisli is explain your choice of language listen explain three reasons why you want to participate in nisli why again i didn't actually list it out and you probably shouldn't either but i did write it in separate paragraphs and i told a story with the essay that I wrote. For me, I talked about reasons relating to not just my academic career goals, but also how I actually got interested in Korean in the first place. So your reasons don't necessarily have to be related, but they should make sense in the context of your application. For this essay, you don't just want to focus on why you want to participate in NISLI, but also what you will take out of it. What will you contribute and gain from doing NISLI? That's really what they want to see is how will giving you a scholarship benefit the United States Department of State? Pretty much. The second essay, you have a choice to pick between two prompts and I believe they change every year. So I'm just gonna read you the ones that I had. The first one was, describe a time in the past two to three years when you worked hard towards a goal but did not achieve it. How did you react? What did you do? For 250 words. So obviously I did not do this because I felt really called out. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. But I preferred the second prop, which was, Describe a recent time you were dissolved a disagreement with your parents slash guardians or friends. What did you do? What did you learn? Again, 250 words. So for this one, I talked about... Okay, so I talked about something that didn't actually end up happening, but it worked for the essay. In the end of the essay, I talked about how um, this disagreement, I wanted to resolve it by writing a book about it. Has the book happened? No. Will it happen? Probably not. But at the time, because this was something I really believed in, I wrote it. And, you know, obviously Nisli, like any institution, isn't going to hunt you down and be like, you didn't write the book that you said you were going to read. But it just goes to show that you don't need to have everything figured out in this moment. So even if you're not sure what major you want to study in college or what language, actually no, you should figure out the language. But if you don't know a certain aspect about your life, you can just say what you feel in the moment. What is your academic interest in the moment? What is your passion in the moment? Life is probably going to change and you're probably going to have a different mindset coming out of Nisli. Not from personal experience or anything, but for this one, again, you want to focus on the takeaway from the essays. What did you do? What specific actions did you take? Did you um, initiate a conversation and then go on to start a club? Did you use that initial conflict to pick up the language and use the language as a resolving fact. I don't know, but what did you do and what did you take away from it? That's really the key part. You don't want to spend all of your time in the essay summarizing because you have such a limited word count. When I say show, don't tell, really show the impact rather than saying, I resolved the conflict and now we are besties. We're lifers. Next section is language experience. 
be honest, they will not hold it against you for being a complete beginner. There were some people in my program who were complete beginners and they turned out just fine. So yeah, just be honest with yourself. Don't try to downplay or overestimate what your ability is. I personally measured my ability using some websites. So like TTMAK has a free like Korean level test and you can kind of gauge how much Korean or whatever language it is that you know just from the test but also what you think. So just know that if you indicate you are a beginner, you will not have to take the pre-OPI exam. But if you have some language or you indicate that you will be doing intensive self-study, which many people do do throughout the application process, then you want to be prepared for the OPI test. I will say though, if you are joining this program or any program as a complete beginner, you will have to have that aspect of learning fast and being able to adapt to your surroundings, which is pretty much the point of applying to NISLE anyways. They're looking for people who are mature, who are flexible, especially given COVID. Can you handle living in different situations and accommodating to sudden changes? They're really looking for people who are passionate about NISLE, are passionate about the language, and also who will use this knowledge and take away you know, good things from it. You should be able to answer these three questions by the end of your application. So one, why Nisli? Two, why this language? And three, what will you contribute slash take away from this program? If you're able to answer these questions and give solid, you know, compelling reasons for doing so, your application is likely going to move on to the next round. But just to give things in context, Nisli Y is really, really competitive. I think only about 15 to 25% of applicants get accepted. So if you don't get accepted and it's your first time, just chill out, chill out. Use this setback as motivation to apply again next year and to grow and really study the language again. Because I guarantee you, if Nisli doesn't accept you, perhaps another program will. There's plenty of other study abroad programs with the Department of State that will sponsor high school students or college students if you're a high school senior to go abroad. So if you get rejected, don't get your hopes down. You're going to have plenty of opportunities later in the future to study abroad. Also, another pro tip. If you have a friend or a mentor looking over your essay to edit it, I would summarize your essay in like one to two sentences in the comments and have them read it over. If they read over your essay and they look at the comment and they agree with your summary, that means you properly conveyed the gist of what you're trying to say in your essays and you're pretty much getting your point across because sometimes what you think in your head doesn't really translate to what you're writing and then when other people read it, they can be confused. So do that. Other general tips I have is to talk to alumni of the program. Many of them are pretty much willing to help people get into this sleep because it was such a good experience for them that they want to give back and contribute. There's an entire cohort of the Nisley Soul Kids this year who are vlogging, so I'm gonna just link them all in the description or whatever because y'all rock and I miss you. Application-wise, I think that's pretty much it for the tips I have. I probably will make a video for interviews, so subscribe and watch out for that. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and comment down below any questions you have or if you want me to read over your essays, I'd be more than happy to do so. And yeah, so look forward to more Nisley content. I will be posting the rest of my vlogs that I probably should have done two months ago since I came back, but I low-key procrastinated on uploading those, so I'm just gonna do that now, and then I'm gonna leave for college in two months, so it's a long process, but we'll get there. Good luck on your Nisley apps, and talk to you soon. The lighting changed so much in this video, so we're just gonna have to rock and roll with this. No, because I literally put my tripod on top of the SAT book and I have my script open like this. Good setup.